to close your eyes, and don't worry, I'll tell you when to open them back up. Imagine yourself grasping onto a tiny edge on a very tall cliff. Only air separates you from the toy landscape down below. Nothing blocks the wind up high, and strong gusts make you feel unstable. Your muscles are tired from the last hundred feet of climbing, and your body begins to sag. The tips of your fingers sweat nervously and begin to slip from the edge. You struggle to hold on, but you can't fight any longer. Suddenly, gravity wins, and you're free falling down and down faster and faster. The wind whips through your hair and stings your face. Your heart's in your throat, and the fall seems to never end. With a sudden lurch, you stop. Now open your eyes. This is the fall you've been preparing for. Personally, I fall in rock climbing. You might fall on school exams. Perhaps a bad interview or a fight with a loved one hurls you off a cliff. Maybe a new business plan didn't quite turn out the way you expected, and you're left free falling through space. Notice that in each of these situations, you fall. You do not fail. Falling is not the same as failing. Now let's remember this equation for just a little bit later. I began climbing when I was nine years old, 13 years ago. In those early years, I never really fell. Did this mean I was a good rock climber? Absolutely not. More accurately, I was inexperienced, I was untrusting, and I lacked confidence, which really isn't the best combination when you're about to take a big risk. But throughout the years, I've learned to overcome these obstacles, even though I continue to fight them each and every day. I've come up with a process that I need to go through, go through each time I take on a big risk. I need to understand my goal, prepare myself and the necessary logistics ahead of time, and trust in my abilities. When I began climbing, I didn't really understand how falling worked. This is because I didn't realize that when I fell off the cliff, I wouldn't slam to the rock, hit the ground, or cheese grate myself down the wall. Once I warmed up to the realization that those things wouldn't happen, I got used to the whole falling idea. But if we don't understand the consequences associated with our risks, or the expectations others have of us, then we aren't ready to take those big falls. Second, we must prepare. Before I attempt to climb at the peak of my ability, I train. I spend long hours in the gym, and I prepare my mind, because I know that without commitment and motivation, my physical strength is useless. Yet many climbers forget to prepare for the fall. Falling is scary, and it takes practice to force that fear out of our brains. But when we prepare ourselves and the necessary logistics ahead of time, we build confidence. Hopefully, that confidence allows us to trust. Whether we're well-versed in a subject or taking a stab for the first time, we need to trust in our understanding and preparation to get us through the challenge. If we have faith in our abilities, we can put 100% of our concentration into the goal without any distractions. Throughout the years, I've applied this process over and over and over. But sometimes I decide to skip a few steps, thinking, oh, a few less laps in the gym won't hurt, or five hours of sleep the night before I attempt the hardest climb of my life will be plenty. <laughs> These are the decisions that make for a rough fall. But those times when I decide to understand my goal, prepare myself, and trust wholeheartedly in my abilities, these are the times I have a chance of succeeding. Now, a few years ago, I, gr I began working on a route called Grand Ole Opry, which is one of the most difficult climbs in Colorado. It's a very technical climb. As I began working out the moves on Grand Ole Opry, I realized what the route would require of me. I would need incredible strength in my fingers, power in my shoulders, and a strong mind to get me through the runout sections, which means that you're really far above your last piece of protection, in my case, a bolt, so you're gonna take a really big fall. Now, I remember the moment that I made a conscious decision to finish Grand Ole Opry. I knew that I was ready to trust in my abilities and commit to the route. 
I would really love to tell you that as soon as I made this decision, I just hiked up and climbed the route easily. But unfortunately, that is not what happened at all. Instead, I spent the next few weeks falling and falling and falling. These weren't little falls, but massive whippers off the most difficult move, which again was run out above a bull I was forced to skip, making my fall even bigger. I would lunge for that final move, only to find myself falling 30 feet through the air. But despite the frustration of continuously falling off a route I so badly wanted to complete, I was not failing. I was learning. Twist my left hip in, squeeze with both hands, move my right foot up just an inch. With each fall, I learned a subtlety. Now let's return back to our equation. <coughs> fall does not equal fail. I want you to think of a time in your life when you felt like you failed. What did you learn? Perhaps patience and kindness. How to be respectful yet stand up for ourselves. Maybe to set an alarm earlier or not wear heels up on a big stage in front of people, which hopefully that won't work against me. <laughs> the list is endless. Now, here's where it's about to get really cheesy. I want you to take that lesson in your hand and see that space in the eye. We're gonna shove our lessons into that space. What happened? It looks to me like our fails weren't really fails after all. They were just falls. Now, you might not all be thrilled about this news. Perhaps you're afraid of heights and you would rather just accept that fail than have to take a fall. But I'm going to try and convince you that falling is actually really fun. Who here wants the perfectly chiseled body? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> the top climbers are those falling more than anyone else. This is because they're attempting things that are not only above their own limits, but that no one else has tried before. This is Chris Sharma, one of the top climbers in the world. Chris has spent the last five years falling off the same route without success. Now this might seem frustrating, but a few weeks ago, Chris finished this route that he's been working on for five years. This is because he was willing to keep trying and keep falling to eventually reach that success. If you're willing to fall hundreds of times just like Chris, maybe you two could look like him. <laughs> <laughs> now, perhaps you're more adrenaline, adrenaline oriented. In this case, I don't even need to tell you why falling is fun. You can just see the picture. But more likely, you have a family, a career, and responsibilities in life. In this case, falling is risky. You've done all you can to prepare, but what happens afterwards? You need a backup plan, a lifeline. When we fall, we have some serious momentum to deal with. We're left swinging around on the end of our rope, confused and frustrated, wondering why we didn't get to the top. But once we slow down, we can find that rope. It may be narrow, but we can look up and pull ourselves back up to where we started. And then we can try and try again until finally we succeed. Now, I used to think that this process only applied to rock climbing. But as I transitioned to college and learned to balance my academic requirements with my athletic goals, I learned that climbing, the sport for total dirtbags has taught me some serious life lessons. <laughs> Each time we take a risk in life, there's a chance we'll take that fall. But we can understand our goal, prepare ourselves, and trust in our capabilities. Perhaps we'll win big, but chances are, at some point, we're probably gonna take the fall. While scary and sometimes disheartening, these falls don't have to be fails, as long as we're learning a little something along the way. Maybe it's just a slight twist of the hip into the wall, or maybe it's to study instead of party the week before finals. <laughs> Regardless, these are the lessons that build us back up and ultimately allow us to succeed. But remember, it might take a few tries. After all, we are humans, not Spider-Man. <laughs> Thank you.